C'est très difficile d'être petite entreprise. C'est très difficile, très difficile. On est là 12 heures à 13 heures par jour. C'est beaucoup de stress, beaucoup d'enthousiasme. C'est nouveau tous les jours, moi ça fait juste 10 jours, alors c'est vraiment tout 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 début. Il hein. faut gérer les temps, les temps de crise, les... c'est pas toujours évident. How well small and medium-sized enterprises are doing is a good indication of how well the European economy is doing overall. That's because SMEs create nearly 9 out of every 10 jobs. And that's why the European Parliament has made it a priority to give SMEs a better chance to thrive in a highly competitive global market. The EPP Group's Paul Hubig has spearheaded a years-long effort to cut costs and slash red tape for SMEs to give those firms a boost in Europe and beyond. We've seen that the uh, start-up business has to play a very important role. So we want to have it within three days, as an example, or within the limit of 100 euro. The Rubig report, adopted by the European Parliament, calls for a reduction in costs for founding new SMEs via so-called one-stop shops that assist entrepreneurs in getting started. If we want to get rid of unemployment, we need more qualified entrepreneurs. Uh, that's a reason why I also wrote a, big, a book about uh, more freedom uh, for entrepreneurs. Uh, that's quite important for all of us. We created also a program Erasmus for young entrepreneurs, where we exchange young entrepreneurs uh, in different uh, countries to get experience from their suppliers, from their uh, customers. That program can help get entrepreneurs thinking beyond borders. So far, only 25% of SMEs are active in Europe's internal market, and only half that internationally. Antonio Tajani is EU Commissioner for Industry and a member of the EPP. If we want to, to work in favor of the internationalization of our small and medium-sized companies, unfortunately only 13% of our companies is working abroad, the uh, European Union. For this it's important to, to, to work all together. The uh, European Commission uh, wants to back the clusters, classes university, big companies and small and medium-sized companies, all together for more competitiveness and also for a good access to finance, also European uh, found. In the Parliament, Rubik sought to lift roadblocks for SMEs, leading an effort to prevent national laws from hindering them. In the member states, we have established the so-called SME test, where uh, national legislators can check uh, how legislation could help the SMEs in future and I think the SME test has to be enforced more heavily on member states level. The business community believes the European Parliament can play a leading role in promoting SMEs. Arnaldo Abruzzini is Secretary General of the Business Association Eurochambers. The Parliament is the only elected body we have at European level. They represent our interests. One of those interests is research and development. The EPP group is pushing for SMEs to get 15% of the EU's 80 billion euro Horizon 2020 budget for R&D. That would be a very good target. If we do not account for a certain amount of money to finance that process, we risk to lose the SME capacity to innovate. Yes, 15% is a good earmark. Many SMEs have profited from the Internet, and the EPP group has pushed for an effective framework to open up Europe's digital single market by 2015. Late payments have hampered that single market and the supply chain throughout Europe as much as two months or more in some countries. The EPP group successfully pushed for legislation limiting invoice payment deadlines to 30 days. We have at least uh, the 30 days there, uh, with still some exemptions. But the trend is going uh, consequently into this uh, direction. Abruzzini welcomes the rules and urges all EU28 to fully enforce them. He says so far only two have fully complied. Certainly the contribution of the European Parliament uh, in promoting the culture of the payment on time has been very important. And the fact that they have passed the legislation on delayed payment represents a good step ahead. But that is not enough. That is not enough because in reality what member states are doing, they have transposed the directive but they have not implemented it. That's why the business community sees the glass half full when it comes to reform. The parliament perspective I think is positive, but definitely we need much more because 
the economy represented uh, uh, large by SMEs is fragile and we need to take care about this. Rübig agrees it's a work in progress. His new book titled Business Requires Freedom calls for further measures ahead. The principle is that our work is to give freedom to entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, we want to support especially women entrepreneurs and migrants and new types of entrepreneurs. So self-employment should play a heavier role. And that's what we have to fight for. That's a rethinking of a reboost of economy has always to start in our head. No one can claim unmitigated success in boosting SMEs in Europe. Times are still tough for entrepreneurs. But the European Parliament has taken steps to remove obstacles and multiply the opportunities for SMEs, on which the European economy so deeply depends for its recovery. Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.